आई वेलकम यू ऑल एट द हिंदू न्यूज पेपर एनालिस डिस्कशन एट द थिंकिंग पैलेट प्लेटफॉर्म टूडे इज ट्वेंटी एट्थ ऑफ फेब्रुवरी एंड इन द टूडे सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द एंटायर एनालिस ऑफ हिंदू न्यूज पेपर विल सी द आर्टिकल्स अलॉन्ग विद देयर बैकग्राउंड वे फॉरवर्ड एट्सेट्रा नाउ बिफोर स्टार्टिंग आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू दैट यू कैन डाउनलोड द एक्सप्लेनर नोट्स ऑफ दिस एंटायर सेशन फ्रॉम द टेलीग्राम चैनल लिंक फॉर टेलीग्राम चैनल इज गिवन इन डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स इन यूट्यूब now uh, uh, before starting let's see the overview of entire newspaper first so that we can understand that which articles are actually important in the today's newspaper so uh, the first article guys here heavy peaceful polling in meghalaya and nagaland okay so you are not required to see uh, basically the exit polls and the all such kind of a things fine so not nothing much important here then moving on after that we have these advertisements etc then moving on excise policy case court sent sisodia to 5 days cbi custody okay so these are the regional political issues fine no no need to go too much here in these kind of details okay so we'll move on then these tenders advertisements etc have been given so we will move in this particular direction again the political news uh, have been given so guys <coughs> moving on and we reach to editorial page one thing i want to tell you that if you are having some other edition of hindu newspaper let's say the chennai edition bengaluru edition or some other regional section is different okay so, but mainly political crime related news are there which are not that much important other newspaper other sections are same so here editorial page making a name without onomastics now this article guys it is talking about the naming in different different novels fictional characters why the naming how the naming is done the significance of the naming etc article guys for the examination is not containing such of relevance if you want to read as your own personal interest you can read but for exam article doesn't contains much of substance then side article congress will have to build a campaign aligned to their new vision for 2024 elections political article no need to go there unpacking the new set of e waste rules we'll see this particular article with respect to the examination good article favorites on top this article talks about australia's victory in the t20 world cup okay uh, we need to democratically reimagine science so guys briefly we will see this article also then aam aadmi party on defensive nothing uh, much important in this particular article for your examinations okay then further moving on uh, relatively few tobacco users in the south india so basically guys here the comparison has been given as the percentage of men who chewed gutka tobacco pan masala fine so the comparison between the different different states etc have been given here okay so so you uh, can see that then coming to text and the context page okay uh, i have received uh, some of the comments saying this thing that they don't have text and context page in their edition uh guys there might be a possibility that the edition that you are receiving text and context is not there but here we include it in every class so no worries if you don't have it in your physical copy you can uh, see it here in our analysis you can understand that okay so the new start treaty on pause so russia has said that they are suspending the new start peace uh, uh, treaty so we'll see that what is this new start uh, start treaty what will what will be its implications and brief history about the uh, russia us relations vis-a-vis -vis the uh, disarmament talks that they have done in past we'll see this article then coming to next article organ on a chip a tech which mimics disease systems in lab conditions we'll see what these organ in chips are fine for exam we'll see this then coming on to the news section agnipath scheme is in national interest says delhi high court okay so guys agnipath scheme was launched by the government where it was provided that in the armed in the armed services okay the jawans will be inducted through this agnipath scheme they will be called as agni veers but this particular scheme was criticized and delhi high court has now said that it is in national interest it is a well thought scheme okay already anyhow multiple number of times we have seen the agnipath scheme but you are not required to go and track these day to day developments that what is the comment made by delhi high court today what are the uh, the ongoing case and all such things okay because upsc doesn't ask such kind of a questions then further moving on a joint statement at g20 meeting is unlikely we'll see this article then we have largely the political articles on this particular page so no need to go here now here we have an important article 13 year old buddhist stupa found in odisha's jajpur we'll see this article then after that uh, history of invasions dug up to keep nations on the boil 
सुप्रीम कोर्ट ओके सो गाइज वन पिटिशन वॉज फाइल्ड इन सुप्रीम कोर्ट वेर इट वॉज सेट दैट ड्यूरिंग द कॉलोनियल टाइम्स मैनी ऑफ द प्लेसेज विच बी आर द एंशियंट हिस्टोरिक नेम्स ओके फ्रॉम द रामायण महाभारत दोज नेम्स गॉट चेंज्ड ओके एंड नाउ अगेन वी नीड टू रिस्टोर दोज नेम्स फाइन सो री नेमिंग ऑफ सर्टन प्लेसेज इज बींग टॉक अबाउट एंड सुप्रीम कोर्ट हेयर सेज दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज सेट दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट बेसिकली इट दीज काइंड ऑफ अ थिंग्स हैव केप्ट द नेशन ऑन ऑयल वी नीड टू मूव बी ऑन दैट कर्नाटक बेस्ट इक्विप टू सप्लाई रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी विल सी दिस आर्टिकल विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एग्जामिनेशन देन कमिंग ऑन वर्ल्ड पेज सो चाइना ब्लास्ट यू एस एजेंसीज कोविड नाइनटीन लैब लीक रिपोर्ट सो सिंस ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी दिस कन्फ्रंटेशन इज गोइंग ऑन बिटवीन चाइना एंड USA USA often has uh, accused that the China is responsible for covid-19 pandemic Donald Trump very uh, evidently said that thing multiple number of times and now one US report has released which says that the covid-19 was leaked from a lab in China and China has criticized this particular report they said that is a vendetta it is a smear campaign it is a propaganda against China okay Beyond that, no need to follow this particular article because, guys, this uh, cat fight between U.S. China, between U.S. Russia goes on every day. Okay, a few days back it was it was balloon fight, and now this residents of West Bank count cost of Israeli reprisal. Then U.K. U. start new chapter over Northern Ireland trade pact. Bank credit growth slowed to 16.8 percent in third quarter. Okay, uh, now guys, uh, one thing I have told you it many many number of times. Okay, that you are not required to track the quarterly data, monthly data, fine with respect to the import, export, credit growth, etc. Because by the time you will give your mains exam, okay, or by the time you will write your exam prelims or mains both, these data will change, and even these things are not asked in examination. TRL to acquire mains US generic portfolio, so these corporate news, etc., not very much important for our examination. okay then further guys after that we have the sports uh, after that we have the sports page so this is brief overview of this entire newspaper to give you a glimpse of the today's news articles okay and what is important what is not that much important now let's discuss about uh, all these important articles one by one in the detail okay fine now starting it up okay before starting uh, formally let's take some of the doubts i can see there are some of doubts that are there uh, first of all good morning to everyone satish rb kanan dharm uh, prakash kajal sandeep uh, disha sairaj sir i have a doubt do we read, need to read the other newspaper as well apart from the hindu okay rishi thanks uh, dear you are liking it okay habziba pallavi ss18 a very good morning to all okay so there is a question that do you need to read the other newspapers also i'll not suggest to read multiple newspapers because it is not sustainable in the long run you can do it for few days but you can't sustain it for a year to come i will suggest stick to one newspaper and do it diligently every day without a break rather than doing two newspapers on few days and on other days not doing anything else make your preparation always sustainable okay that is a, an advice that i will give you now today we'll take the quotation from desmond tutu okay so desmond tutu says do your little bit of good wherever you are it's those little bits of good put together that overwhelms the world don't always think that you can if you can make a big change that is the only change whatever small change you can bring by the acts of kindness by the acts of empathy please do those things because if we will all do the small 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 goods then these small goods will collect and will believe a very big impact so don't focus that what will be the impact of your actions just do the action that is a message that is being given here and this particular uh, idea can be used very effectively in gs paper number 4 ethics gs paper number 4 ethics integrity and aptitude so as a human your focus should only be this that what good you can bring by your own actions okay so that is about this quotation and now let's take the first article okay so the first article that i am picking i am picking from the text and the context section the new start treaty on pause the new start treaty on pause now guys basically it has been uh, uh, basically when we talk about the warfare in the present times today's warfare has become much more deadly it has become much more costly 
and its repercussions spread not only on the countries which are fighting but its repercussions spread even on those countries which are not directly involved in the war and particularly with the coming of the nuclear weapons the war has become even more deadly and in this particular direction there is one particular idea one particular uh, line that you can also use for example a nuclear war cannot be won a nuclear war cannot be won because we know whenever a nuclear war will start it will lead to mutually assured destruction there will be no survivors if there is ever be a nuclear war no country will survive to face the victory or defeat so a nuclear war can never be won and therefore it must never be fought it must never be fought and post post the nuclear test of usa this particular thing got realized now we know this particular thing guys that cold war cold war we know this particular thing that just after the world war 2 cold war started between the usa and ussr okay and we know this particular thing that usa was already a nuclear powered state nuclear weapon state and ussr also developed the nuclear capabilities and as confrontations are going on every day there was the fear that a deadly nuclear war can start so therefore during the cold war both the usa and ussr has tried to come out with the treaties they have tried to come out with the agreements by which they will keep a tab on each other's nuclear stockpiles by which they will be coming under an obligation that they should not go for an excessive armament because it will be disastrous for both and in this particular line many of the treaties have been signed between usa and ussr since the cold war started okay many treaties have been signed now first of all let's talk about these historic treaties that have been signed and now then after that we will come in this particular article the new start treaty why russia has suspended it what's its implications will be all those things we are going to see now first of all guys as the cold war was going on and the armament was being carried so basically so basically uh, the first dialogue was uh, first dialogue was discussed between usa and ussr and it is called as the strategic arms limitation talks salt SALT. This is the first formal dialogue that is strategic arms limitation talks SALT that started between nine USA USSR in 1969 and after this particular thing there was a new treaty that was signed between the USA and USSR just around the collapse of the USSR that is the strategic arms reduction treaty which is popularly called as the START 1 START 1. It was signed in 1991 and actually it got expired in 2019, sorry, 2009. This strategic arm reduction treaty put obligations on both USA and USSR that they need to reduce the stockpile of their nuclear weapons, their nuclear warheads, they need to reduce the stockpile of nuclear weapon launchers and all these kind of a things. But this treaty expired in 2009. Now guys, meanwhile, Meanwhile, there was one more treaty that was started as a stop gap arrangement. Okay, that is the SALT, Strategic Offensive Reduction Treaty. Strategic Offensive Reduction Treaty, SALT. It got signed, it got signed in 2002. It got signed in 2002. But guys, actually this particular treaty was replaced by the New START Treaty, New START Treaty that was signed in 2010. So let me explain you the chronology once again. So number one, came the start 1991 to 2009 and once this start was finished that is in 2009 there was the new start treaty that was signed just after that in 2010 and this particular treaty consolidated uh, this particular treaty replaced this sort the strategic offensive reduction treaty also so right now this is not existing this sort is not existing right now the new start treaty is the existing treaty between usa and ussr now Sorry, uh, Russia. Now, this particular treaty actually has been extended recently in 2021 after the Joe Biden came to the office. So, right now, under this new start treaty, there are certain obligations on both Russia and USA. Let's understand what are these obligations. Number one, under this particular treaty, both America and Russia cannot deploy more than 1550 strategic nuclear warheads. They cannot have more than 700 long-range missiles. In terms of the in, in terms of the launchers, nuclear weapon launchers, they cannot have more than 800 deployed and non-deployed launchers. Actually, you are not required to remember these numbers, okay? But uh, you need to have an idea that what areas it is covering. 
Moreover, it has also been provided that the USA and Russia both can both can send up to 18 short notice on-site inspections. What it means? It means that USA can send notice to Russia and Russia can send notice to the USA that we want to inspect your nuclear sites, that what you are doing there, what activities are going on, how much warheads you have consolidated at those particular sites, so they can inspect that particular thing. It is to ensure that the other country had not crossed the limits that have been sent, set under this new start treaty. Then after that, the third obligation under this new start that was is that both Russia and USA will exchange the data twice a year on ballistic missiles that they are having. Moreover, this particular treaty also put an obligation on both USA and Russia that they need to send notifications within five days if they are changing or updating something in their nuclear stockpile. If they are moving their missiles from one place to other place or whatever changes they are doing, within five days of that particular change, they need to send notice to each other. So this particular treaty had helped in this particular treaty had helped in three ways. Number one, it has helped in reducing the nuclear arsenal. It has helped in reducing the nuclear arsenal. Right now, when we talk about the nuclear warheads or nuclear weapons, 90% of the stockpile is with USA and USSR. Okay. Secondly, what has happened? It has helped in, it, it, it has helped in uh, basically the uh, confidence it has helped in bringing the confidence building measure between us and ussr because both are sharing information so confidence building measure has also been there and third by the way of this particular treaty the global peace by the way of this particular treaty the global peace has been preserved so this treaty is actually very very important for the world peace now as it was going on now guys what has happened first of all since 2020 since 2020 inspections under this particular treaty as we have seen that regular inspections need to be there these inspections have been stalled why because first of all the covid 19 pandemic came so because of that particular thing after that guys basically because of the a war between Russia and Ukraine started, then the cooperation broke down on the new START treaty. And now what has happened recently, that is on the February 23rd, Vladimir Putin, the Russia's president has announced that Russia is suspending, suspending this new START treaty because the West is trying to destroy Russia. Russia says this particular thing that the USA, with the help of their allies, they are increasing the nuclear weapons, they are providing the weapons to Ukraine, but Russia is under the obligation. So Russia is suspending this particular treaty momentarily. Now, A, it is a bad news. Why? Because guys, if that treaty will be suspended, then the global peace will be endangered. But B, Russia had not said that we are withdrawing it or we are terminating it. They have said that we are suspending it. So it could be a, a, a measure that might be revived in the future. So we hope that it should get revived in the future. Okay, so that is all guys about it. That is all about it. I hope that you have understood this particular article. Okay, now moving to the next article, organ on a chip. Fine. Uh, okay, let's see some of the doubts. Uh, uh, very good morning to others also. Anand, Hani, Muthu, Ujjal. Fazil sir, is it right as, uh, Fazil I answered this question in the previous class also as, is it right as height increases, temperature will come down? Yes, yes. When you go on hill stations, when you go on mountains, whether the temperature comes down or not, yes, it comes down. It, they are cool places. Fine, fine. But when, but when the wind will come from top to bottom, then that wind by compression will get hot. So coming from top to down, temperature will increase. Coming from down to top, temperature will decrease. Okay. Now, organ on a chip, a tech which mimics disease system in lab conditions. Now, we will see this particular article with respect to the science and technology, GS paper number 3, as well as for the prelims examination, we are going to see this particular article. Now, in this particular article, guys, the reference, uh, many of the scientists, where they are working, on what date they released their findings, such things are given. That is not important for our examination. We need to see that what is this discovery is all about, what will be its implications. Fine. Now. Basically, guys, what has happened, USA is on a forefront, USA is on a forefront to develop these organ chips, to develop these organ chips. And in now, I'll explain what are these organ chips. And moreover, in order to expand research on organ chips, USA 
इट हैज ऑल्सो पास फूड एंड ड्रग एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन मॉडर्नाइजेशन एक्ट टू पॉइंट ओ रिसेंटली नाउ वट आर दीज ऑर्गन चिप्स तो दीज ऑर्गन चिप्स आर द स्मॉल डिवाइसेस स्मॉल डिवाइसेज स्मॉल मशीन दैट कंटेन ह्यूमन सेल्स ओके एंड एक्चुअली दे आर यूज टू मिमिक द एनवायरमेंट विद इन द ह्यूमन बॉडी तो गाइज लेट्स लेट्स ए देर इज अ बॉडी ऑर्गन हर्ट तो विद इन अ हर्ट देयर इज अ पर्टिकुलर टाइप ऑफ एन एनवायरमेंट दैट इज प्रिवेलिंग देर इज ब्लड फ्लो देर इज न्यूट्रिय फ्लो ओके देर आर द सेल्स विच आर ऑपरेटिंग इन अ पर्टिकुलर वे नाउ अंडरस्टैंड सो बेसिकली दीज ऑर्गन चिप्स आर द डिवाइसेज दीज आर द इक्विपमेंट्स विच मेमिक्स द एनवायरमेंट ऑफ आ ह्यूमन बॉडी नो वाई वी नीड टू हैव दीज ऑर्गन चिप्स इट इज टू टेस्ट द एफिकेसी ऑफ अ मेडिसिन टू टेस्ट द एफिकेसी ऑफ अ ड्रग नो गाइज अंडरस्टैंड दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट वेन एवर अ ड्रग इज बींग गिवन टू यू इट गोज इन योर बॉडी एंड इट फंक्शन इन अ पर्टिकुलर वे इट विल हैव सर्टन इम्पैक्ट ऑन योर बॉडी सो टू चेक दैट एफिकेसी दीज ऑर्गन चिप्स आर बींग डेवलप्ड now guys today whenever any drug is to be developed before a drug is given a final approval there are the pre clinical studies that are carried on that particular drug what are the stages of these pre clinical studies first of all let's understand them and then we'll go again back on this need of these organ chips now first of all guys whenever we talk about whenever we talk about developing a drug it is a very expensive kind of a process first of all researchers will identify the chemical compounds that can be used to treat a particular disease that can be used to treat a particular body condition so first they will identify those chemical compounds then they will make medicine out of that particular compound they will test the toxicity of that particular compound on the human body whether it is toxic or not if they pass that toxicity test then what they do they use the efficiency of that particular medicine on the animals for example they use it on mice rats hamsters pigs okay depending of on that particular disease they use it on to the animals now basically the problem is that this entire process is very expensive and failure rate is very high in these drug discovery and many number of times when there are the failures in this particular kind of process then the scientist and researchers have blamed that particular thing on the use of animal models they say that but certain animals can get a particular disease that a human is also getting infected with but the animals should not be used because they cannot correctly mimic the impact of a drug okay fine so environment and the impact on animals will be different on humans will be different so when we are testing it on to the animal we often get a error we often get a wrong result but for the reason of ethics and morality we cannot test it on to the humans also in the very first start stage so what to do so here the solution comes that is the organ chips now what are these organ chips organ chips are these devices that can mimic that can mimic the different uh, disease states that can mimic the different disease states they can mimic the environment within the human body you put the drug there and then you see the result that whether it is treating the disease or it is not treating the disease okay so researchers biomedical companies in the west they are building these human on chip models okay and they are trying to mimic the different different body organs okay in india also we are focusing to develop these particular kind of a model so that research on medications on drugs can be more effective can be more fast and can be more efficient fine so this is all about this particular development fine guys i hope that you have understood it okay fine uh, is it clear guys can we move now uh, one more thing is that when the upsc asks question upsc is asking a very broad type of questions okay they will not be asking you okay that tell us the working of this particular machine because such things have not been there now uh, guys is it clear are you able to understand please confirm now moving to next article 13 year old uh, buddhist stoop found in odisha's jajpur fine now guys when we talk about the stupas buddhist stoop stoop means a hemispherical structure or a hemispherical mound and under these structures early the most earliest stupas were the ones which carried the relics of the gautam buddha and later stupas they carried the relics of the buddhist monks buddhist nuns so these stupas are the kind of a sites which carried the remains of the or the relics of the buddha and 
also in the later stages the buddhist monks buddhist nuns etc and these sites are having a very rich religious significance for the buddhist community and also it has a cultural significance for the country from time to time there are certain discoveries of the stupas discoveries of certain artifacts that is made and one such discovery has now been made in odisha where this 1300 year old buddhist stoop has been discovered while there was a mining going on fine now let's understand this particular discovery and we will see this with respect to the art and culture prelims examination art and culture prelims examination or gs paper number 1 will understand this now what has happened to the archaeological survey of india has stumbled or it has come across it has come across a 13 year old stupa in the middle of a mining site in odisha's jajpur now they have found this particular stupa when they were mining for the condalite stones will understand this condalite stones also what are these so basically while mining for this condalite stone they come across a 13 year old stupa basically guys they have actually come across two of the stupas there was one smaller stupa also that got discovered but it has been completely destroyed when this particular mining is going on and now it cannot be restored so one has been destroyed but one they have recovered now this stoop it is 4.5 meters tall and initial assessments uh, complete reports have not come till now but initial assessments uh, shows that it belongs to 7th or 8th century 7th or 8th century and this particular uh, stupa this particular remain has been found at uh, prabhadi prabhadi now prabhadi it is situated near lalitgiri and it happens to be a major buddhist complex and large number of stupas and monasteries are there in the in in and around the prabhadi so this particular region is already very important for buddhist culture and there are some criticisms also that have come is that that when there are so much of the buddhist remains artifacts that have been found in this region why the mining project was first approved that was wrong okay anyhow moving on in this particular thing so this is something that has happened and this is the only or complete information that we have up till now more information will come but this is the only thing that we have up till now as per the article now what are these condalite stones that were being excavated so basically condalite stones actually were widely used in the ancient temple complexes ancient buildings that have been made now guys right now the odisha's government is focusing on the redevelopment of the puri city okay so jagannath puri so they are focusing on the development of puri so that the puri can be made as the world heritage city and as they are focusing on their redevelopment renovation obviously they need to bring those stones only which have been used uh, in the ancient structures and the condalite stone is one which has been used into the ancient structures so they are excavating these condalite stones and are using it for the upgradations or renovations of the ancient temple complexes and for that particular thing odisha government has also come out with a special scheme that is abada abada augmented of augmentation of basic amenities and development of heritage and architecture scheme so within 3 years they want to transform the puri city okay and uh, therefore these condalite stones are being used to maintain the uh, uh, aesthetic value okay so basically the, the jagannath balav pilgrim center puri lake development project atharnala heritage project fine matha development initiatives all are being taken up under this uh, redevelopment program so that is all about this particular article guys fine i hope that you have understood it okay uh, please ask if you have any doubt yes yes guys any doubt if you have please ask your doubt okay so that is all about uh, this particular development that we have right now okay now moving to the editorial section okay so unpacking the new set of e waste rules unpacking the new set of e waste rules now this particular article will see with respect to the gs paper number 3 gs paper number 3 environmental conservation okay now uh, moving on so this article is talking about the e waste e waste rules now first of all when we talk about guys the modern civilization in the modern civilizations in the 21st century particularly the usage of the electronic products electronic equipments have increased manifold 
and as we are using more and more electronic equipments the electronic waste e-waste problem has also become very much big now these e-waste often they are they contain certain toxic substances which are harmful for uh, nature if they peep into the ground they can impact the ground water table okay for example guys mercury okay mercury often is used into these electronic products and the mercury mercury poisoning is very dangerous to the humans so we need to ensure that how sustainably we can manage this electronic waste after they have reached their end of life okay so for the management of the e-waste we have come out with the e-waste management rules from time to time now the first e-waste management rules were notified in 2011 okay and these 2011 e-waste rules were very important because they brought the concept of extended producer responsibility that is epr now let's understand that what is this epr so basically let's say i am a mobile manufacturer and i am manufacturing a mobile phone the life of this mobile phone is let's say 10 years so it is my responsibility that after 10 years i take back this particular mobile phone from the consumer and i recycle it sustainably and an environmentally friendly manner so this is an extended producer responsibility responsibility for producer to take back the electronic product after the end of that life this concept was introduced okay then guys after this 2011 e-waste rules there was a new set of e-waste rules that got notified in 2016 that is e-waste management rules of 2016. These particular rules was amended in 2018 also. And the most important feature of this e-waste rule 2016 was the producer responsibility organization. Producer responsibility organization. What are these organizations? So basically guys, these are the collectives, these are the groups which can be financed collectively or individually by the producers. Let's take one example. Suppose in India, we have five mobile manufacturing companies. Now, these five mobile manufacturing companies can make a kind of a collective. They can make a kind of an organization where they share the responsibility to collect and channelize the e-waste generated from the end-of-life product. For example, guys, let's say there are five mobile phone operators. One is Oppo, other is Apple, one is Samsung, likewise. Now, Apple, let's say, uh, let's say Samsung uh, had sold one lakh mobile phones in 2020. Now let's say the end, the life cycle of the mobile phone is five years. So in 2005, sorry, 2025, 2025, five years after 2020, they need to collect back the one lakh phones that they have sold in 2020. Now, when they will go, obviously they will find it very difficult to collect the one lakh phones only of the Samsung brand. So what they can do, they can collect the other brands of phones also. Likewise, the other brands when they are going they can also collect the other brands so collectively they will do this particular work this is the producer responsibility organization where they can form a collective organization this is something now recently we have come out with the 2022 e-waste rules 2022 e-waste rules now what are these 2022 e-waste rules and what are the problems which they have not addressed it is being discussed in this particular article largely and we will see that Okay, so it is being said that first of all, the e-waste management rules 2022 includes the provision of the EPR framework, okay, EPR framework, okay, which is a very good thing, okay. Uh, when we talk about the earlier rules, the, 20, uh, the 2016 rules, they had a weak monitoring system and a lack of transparency, okay. Now guys, understand this thing that uh, there are the waste collectors, there are the recyclers. They are the refurbishers. Many players are there which are involved into the e-waste chain. Let's take one example. Suppose there is a producer. Producer has the responsibility of EPR, extended producer responsibility. They need to collect that product after the end of life. But whether they are doing it or not, monitoring mechanism was not there. Okay. There are the recyclers which say often there are the refurbishers which say that we are doing these works for the mobile phone company, let's say. But whether they are doing it or not, monitoring mechanism was not there. Okay. Moreover, the repair shops, repair shops, which are using the e-waste, which are dealing with the electronic waste, uh, repairing them, they were not authorized under the Central Pollution Control Board. They have not taken the permission under that. So these are all issues that we had. Okay, now when we talk about the 2022 rules, these 2022 rules aim to incentivize the registered electron electronic waste recyclers by using 
EPR certificates. EPR certificates. Now let's understand that what are these EPR certificates? Little bit briefly. Let's say there is a, a Samsung mobile phone company. There is Samsung mobile phone company and they have sold in 2020, let's say 1000 mobile phones. They have sold in 1000 mobile phones. The life of these mobile phones is let's say five years. So it means that in 2025, 2025, the Samsung needs to collect back these 1000 mobile phones from the market because they need to dump them because they need to recycle or they need to uh, manage that. Okay, now Samsung might not have that particular expertise. Samsung might not have that particular capability that know how. So what Samsung can do, uh, basically what here can be the case, recyclers will come in between. Recyclers will come in between. Now these recyclers are the dedicated companies which have only expertise in collecting the e-waste and uh, managing that e-waste, dumping or recycling that e-waste in a sustainable manner. So what we'll do, for example, this recycler by the name of ABC, recycler by the name of ABC, what they have done, their expertise is only in recycling and collecting the e-waste. They have collected 1000 Samsung mobile phones, let's say, and what they did, they recycled it or they refurbished it or they reused certain components okay or they have sustainably disposed them they have sustainably disposed them so they will do this thing and they can give a certificate directly to the samsung they will give a certificate directly to the samsung that samsung have done their work what they were supposed to do and in turn samsung will pay them money in terms of the samsung will pay the money so this is the concept of recyclers this is the concept of uh, yeah, this is the concept of EPR certificates that recyclers can do that work and can give that certificate to them. Is it clear or not? And these certificates have also to be verified by the Central Pollution Control Board. For example, ABC says that we have recycled 1000 mobile phones and we are giving certificate to Samsung. So whether they have actually recycled or not, that verification will also be done by the CPCB. So this is a very important measure that has been brought in this particular 2022 e-waste rules. Moreover, elect, uh, we have already told you electric good companies can buy these certificates online, okay, or they can buy it from the CPCB to meet their annual target. But this is good, this is good, but there are certain things that it has missed. There is a critical assessment also that we need to do, what they lacked, what they did not focus upon. So first of all, first of all, uh, when we talk about the e-waste recovery or e-waste management, there are the two important stages in e-waste management. Number one. Number one is component recovery, component recovery. Now many components, many types of metals are being used into the electronic waste which can be reused in other uh, products. Fine, many, uh, there, there can be the rare earth metals that can be recovered, okay. Now guys, if we recover these things efficiently, then our dependence on the virgin resources, completely new resources will be reduced. Okay, we not need to mine the rare earth metals from the earth every time if we can retrieve it from the old equipments, old e-waste equipments. So this is the first component recovery and second is the residual disposal. Now certain things cannot be reused again. Okay, so they need to be disposed in an environmental friendly manner. So these are two things that are to be focused upon. Okay, so the recovery as well as residual disposals. Now, the point is that the 2022 rules, they does away with the PRO. They don't mention about the PRO organization that we have discussed, which were run by the producers. Rather, they have given all this particular work, recovery as well as residual disposal to recyclers, to the authorized recyclers. Okay, so they have to do all this particular thing. They will do that. They will generate the digital certificates and these digital certificates will be bought. Now, the point is that they have not not uh, they have not taken in account the informal sector informal rag pickers informal waste collectors the kabadi walas they have not been included in that and right now 95 percent right now the 95 percent of the e-waste is being channelized by the kabadi walas by these people so they have not taken them in account now the point is that presently we need to bring certain suitable changes we need to bring certain suitable changes in this e-waste rules to make them more effective. Number one, there is a need to, there is need for simultaneous and consistent effort towards increasing consumer awareness. Okay, you cannot just put all the responsibility on these producers. Consumers should also be aware so that they themselves, 
effectively they take an initiative to dump this e-waste in a sustainable manner strengthening reverse logistics okay so reverse logistics now see a product usually goes from producer to consumer this is a forward logistic or this is a normal logistic reverse logistic is from producer to sorry reverse logistic is from consumer to producer again now in epr this reverse logistic has to be there so this reverse logistic is also needed to be built upon capacity building of stakeholders improving the existing infrastructure designing the products in such a way that they uh, don't use much of the rare earth metals or their life is long right to repair is also something that comes here okay so all these particular things are needed to be focused upon so that is all about this particular article guys i hope that you have understood it fine any doubt if you have please tell me guys now moving to the next article moving to the next article okay uh, we need to democratically reimagine science we need to democratically reimagine science now guys this particular article is a very abstract kind of an article it is written in a metaphorical figurative way and much substance for our upsc examination is not there in this particular article this article is actually talking about this particular thing that we are not scientifically questioning our history we are just using the word scientific temper but we don't understand the word scientific temper okay it has been provided that now the focus on pseudo science is more okay the real science is not being explored the history of science is not being taught often in the name of the history of the science we give more focus on uh, on the uh, on the mythological uh, mythological references and all such kind of a things okay now it is being said that today we need to give a better science literacy we need to give a better science literacy there is a misinterpretation of scientific temperament we don't understand properly what is a science and not only science is to be understand but the criticism systemic criticism of the science is also need to be important okay for example guys just i want to give you one particular example that ayurveda is often called as a science backed science backed methodology but whenever any criticism on certain aspects of ayurveda is done that criticism is not taken uh, in a true in a good spirit okay so even if ayurveda is a science backed methodology criticism needs to be there scientific criticism needs to be the part of our uh, discussion it has been said that today as a part to uh, include the sciences in our curriculums even the humanities it has been said that even the humanities the humanities okay social sciences they are needed to be made part of science education in schools colleges universities fine in name of humanities just we think that only giving language skills in the name of humanities only english skills language skills are being imparted which is not good okay so it has been provided that uh, pseudo science pseudo science which consists of statements beliefs practices that claim to be both scientific and factual but actually are incompatible these things need to be countered by real science so this is something that idea that has been given in this entire article but the article is highly abstract and i have only given you the gist of that article which is relevant for upsc examination but largely the article doesn't contain much of that particular substance so please don't waste too much of your time in that now moving to next article karnatak best equipped to supply renewable energy report okay now this particular article will see with respect to gs paper number 3 environment ecology conservation <clears throat> now what has happened guys recently recently uh, a report has been released by the institute for energy economics and financial analysis ieefa and as per this report it has been said that presently presently karnatak is the state karnataka is the state which is best equipped power systems to transition its electricity system from being a fossil based for being a carbon based to renewable energy based so they have best capabilities they have best systems they have best processes which can help the karnataka to transition from non renewable energies to renewable energies from carbon based energies to the non carbon renewable energies fine now when we talk about india guys already you might be knowing about india's intended nationally determined contributions that india took in 2015 and in paris recently we have revised our indcs also 
even we have taken five targets under panch amrit pledge that we took in cop 26 2020 in 2021 in glasgow okay now when we talk about guys india's climate targets india has taken some ambitious climate targets for example it has been it has been committed by india that half of electricity half of our electricity will come from non fossil fuel sources okay moreover india has also taken the target by 2030 by 2030 half of our electricity will come from non fossil fuels that is from the renewable energies one more target we have taken is emission intensity is to be reduced by 45% by 2030 okay now this is at 2005 level so in 2005 whatever emissions we were committing we need to reduce it to 45% of its level okay so this is something that has been provided now guys uh, achieving reducing our car uh, uh, re reducing our emission intensity by 45 percent bringing our electricity 50 percent of electricity by the renewables we need to transition our energy systems and here karnataka is a good is a state which can do that particular thing we need to accommodate we need to accommodate solar energy wind energy hydropower energy okay now the problem often with these renewable energy is that the problem often with these renewable energies is that uh, renewable energies are being produced but the storage is a very big problem for example sun will be there in the day's time so you produce electricity in day but you need to store that electricity so that it can be used into the night time also so battery technology is a very big issue second is transmission of energy from one place to another place is a very big problem now for that particular thing guys already the center has approved the intrastate transmission system green energy corridor phase 2 okay and under this particular project under this particular project infrastructure will be created for connecting electricity generated from renewables with the power grid okay so the power grid that we have so renewable energy will be fed into that power grid so that that power grid supplies that energy to the other parts of the country so this is something that we are doing okay and for that center government is also allocating a lot of money and karnataka happens to be the best equipped state which can transition in that particular line so that is all guys about this particular article fine you can use it as a case study in your gs3 answers now moving to next article okay a joint statement at g20 meeting is unlikely now guys we'll see this particular article to just understand the state of the world affairs that is going on right now okay now just you need to have a brief idea about this article no need to go too much in detail in this article now, uh, right now, you already might be knowing this thing that for the year 2023, India is hosting the G20. India is the president of G20 for the year 2023. And throughout this 2023 year, there will be more than 200 meetings that will be held across India where delegates from these G20 countries will be coming. Now, guys, India is now hosting the Raisina Dialogue. So, the next week, Raisina Dialogue will be started. What is Raisina Dialogue? So, Raisina Dialogue is, guys, a multilateral conference where the policy makers, academicians, ministers from the different, different countries, they come together and they discuss the issues related to the global politics, international security, fine, cyber security. Now, the Raisina Dialogue, it is organized by the Observer Research Foundation, ORF, which is a think tank and along with the ORF, Ministry of External Affairs, uh, organizes this rise in a dialogue now this rise in a dialogue is being organized since march 2016 and since then it is held every year now this year rise in a dialogue will be held where the g20 delegates will also come okay now there is one issue that has come out of that there is an issue that has come out of that basically guys right now you know this particular thing you know this particular thing that right now there is right now there is the clash that is there going on between Russia, China on one hand and between Western countries on another hand. So Western countries and Russia, China, they don't want to see each other. Last year when in Indonesia G20 summit was being held, G7 countries boycotted even the inaugural dinner. Why? Because Russia's foreign minister was there at that particular dinner. So point that coming is here is that uh, when we are trying to convene the G20 meet, 
for the rice in a dialogue we are bringing the g20 delegates together and within the g20 russia is also there china is also there and western developed countries are also there so how they will come together and how a joint statement will be issued so joint statement might not come in this g20 meet moreover guys as we are holding this g20 at the sidelines of it quad and seo meet quadrilateral security dialogue and seo meets are also being held now when we talk about the russia and china okay particularly the china china has called the quadrilateral security dialogue quad in which there are four countries that is us india us india japan and australia china had said that it is a military alliance against the china so there are many of these problems that are coming because of that there might not be a joint statement that will come out of the g20 meeting of this rice in a dialogue and when the final summit will happen if till that time the war is not resolved things are not resolved then that time also this issue will come so this is guys largely this article is talking about but you are not required to go too much in detail in this particular article okay fine so that is all guys about it and now taking the mains practice question for today so the mains practice question for today reads discuss the key provisions of e waste management rules 2022 how this rule further strengthens the e waste management in india so this will be a 10 marker question for gs paper number 3 so that is all guys about it and uh, with this we come to an end to the today's session and guys if you have uh, felt that the session has helped you please do hit the like button and please help our channel to grow because your likes your comments are very crucial for our channels uh, for our channels survival thank you so much guys now we'll be meeting tomorrow till then please take care of yourselves thank you so much